This is your Barbados Today News Update for Monday, January 31. So glad you could join us. Fresh assurances from New Housing Minister Dwight Sutherland that new homes for those displaced by last year's freak storm and Hurricane Elsa remain issue number one. Sutherland, who formally took up his new portfolio last Thursday, told reporters following a Thanksgiving service at the Ellerton Wesleyan Holiness Church on Sunday to celebrate his re-election that he's working on a plan to tackle the situation. We have hundreds of persons who are still waiting on, on government, but they have given the faith in us and they have given us a new mandate on January 19th. And as I enter that ministry, my first day was on Thursday and I, I intend to create a plan that will see every single homeowner who was struck from Hurricane Elsa dealt with in this year, 2022. I'm hoping that we can finish all within the, the end of the financial year, by the end of the financial year, sorry, but that might not be possible based on the, the amount that I've seen, the amount of, of houses that were affected from Hurricane Elsa. But that is one of my, my, my priorities. Sutherland added that his ministry is determined to deliver on government's mandate to build 10,000 houses in three years, and a key focus will be clearing the backlog for housing applications at the National Housing Corporation. The Prime Minister has asked me firstly to address that as well. So I have several things to address before the end of the financial year, and I will certainly prioritize those persons who would have applied to national housing over the years and have not seen the, the light of the day. That is indeed not what we as a government promulgated, and that is not what we want. So I'll be championing that cause on behalf of, of the government to ensure that that backlog is dealt with firstly, and thereafter, you know, we, we intend to build out the housing stock to have not just houses, but safe, resilient, and, and houses that are affordable for every single one in this country. Tourism and International Transport Minister Lisa Cummins has challenged local companies to expand their reach into international markets to have greater influence on global supply networks. She made the call at the recent launch of Women in Maritime Association Caribbean Barbados Chapter at the Radisson Aquatica Resort. One of the things that I would want to ask the shipping community here tonight, and I want to throw out a challenge to you, I've thrown it out to the tourism partners, I've asked the tourism partners on more than one occasion, why is there no sandals originating from Barbados? Why is there no equivalent of sandals? What is our objection to establishing a commercial presence of Barbadian brands overseas? Why is there no shipping company that is not an intermediary, that is a global entity owned by Barbadian capital? Why is there no near shoring off of Miami in particular, that is owned by Barbadian capital, that takes control of a larger percentage of the supply chain. How do we remove intermediaries in terms of the ownership, not just locally, but taking Barbadian expertise, all of the people we, that, that Norman spoke about, who have come through the industry for a really long time. I want to be able to see that expertise that skill and the many people who I see in this room who I know are in the industry, I want to see your skills globalized with access to capital by being able to own global shipping franchises. Cummins added that with the cost of goods skyrocketing because of challenges in the global supply chain, it's critical that stakeholders in the maritime space become majority shareholders in key areas if the island is to better control the cost of imported goods be a part of the solution to cost of living issues facing our people by becoming a part of the ownership class of the global maritime and the shipping industry and the supply chain where you are at the top, not at the bottom, not at the middle, not in the lower stage, but at the very top of the maritime shipping community. And I want to be able to ensure that certainly in the port of Barbados and Bridgetown Port, that this is a conversation with the entire shipping community that I intend to have very early up in the next couple of weeks. Health authorities have ramped up their fight against the Omicron variant, which is driving a major spike in cases. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Kenneth George told a weekend news conference, with confirmed evidence of community spread of the highly infectious variant, government has developed a five-point surge plan. Pillars of this plan are self 
home and quarantine isolation, particularly looking at self and home isolation as a method to get us out of our current situation. Two, the protection of the vulnerable. Three, an enhanced vaccination approach, which embraces the use of boosters. Four, risk communication. And five, engagement in critical stakeholders. Many of the, I'm, I'm here to report that many of the, the elements I just raised in the search plan are currently operational. He also announced changes to the quarantine period for persons who are COVID-19 positive. Effective immediately, the quarantine period for persons is no longer five days. Quarantine is for three days and you retest on the fourth day. This was instituted based on the epidemiology and the science of transmission of Omicron. So that if you are going to be in quarantine, your quarantine, if you remember that you go into quarantine if you have been exposed. And if you are exposed, the quarantine period is three days and you retest on day four to exit quarantine. Dr. Adana Grandison told the news conference that home isolation has been working well for the most part. She, however, noted there has been a change in symptoms among infected persons. We have seen persons with increased cases of vomiting and diarrhea for this particular wave. And so at this point in time, I would encourage persons that if at any point in time during their illness or the course of their illness, that they ensure to remain hydrated. How do you do that? In medicine, we usually say slow and steady wins the race. Quite often we think that if we have a large vomitus or a very large watery bowel movement, and we don't always feel like eating or drinking that we just stay away from fluids or if we are going to take in fluids that we need to do a very large amount in a short space of time what i'm saying to you is take it nice and slow small volumes of fluid to ensure that you do not become dehydrated also during this period we have had the greatest number of discharges for the program and we continue to work quite valiantly. Our team is actually working around the clock, 24 hours, to ensure that persons are discharged. Now for today's COVID-19 update, the death toll moved to 280 at the weekend. On Sunday, an unvaccinated 84-year-old man died at the Harrison's Point Isolation Facility. A day earlier, a 96-year-old man who was also unvaccinated died at the same facility. Meanwhile, a total of 512 people, 225 males and 287 females, tested positive for COVID-19 on Saturday from the 2,173 tests conducted by the Besta Santos Public Health Laboratory. There were 159 people in isolation facilities, while 9,675 are in home isolation. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I am Onika. I am a mother, I'm a daughter, and I'm a wine educator. When vaccines first came on the scene last year, I was really apprehensive about getting vaccinated. I was worried about taking a drug that I felt was experimental. So at first, I really wasn't about it. I decided to get vaccinated. I had to acknowledge the fact that I am asthmatic and my son is also asthmatic. I have a career in wine. We depend on our senses and I decided that I did not want to risk it for being afraid of taking a vaccine. Coronavirus has affected everyone around the globe. And keeping this in mind, make sure that your decision is not a selfish one and that you're thinking of the benefits of the whole. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To regional news, in Trinidad and Tobago, the Joint Trade Union Movement is condemning plans by Scotiabank to retrench some 150 workers starting in March. More on this report from TTT News. Joint Trade Union Movement says 
The bank's move comes after it has declared hundreds of millions in profit already for the current financial year and claimed to have received awards for Bank of the Year. The trade union body is questioning the corporate social responsibility of the Canadian multinational bank. It underscores that with the declaration of large profits, the bank must justify to the Ministry of Labour the sudden need to restructure under the guise of digitalization. JTAM is concerned that Scotiabank plans to outsource jobs and some of its backroom services to the Dominican Republic, which they say is known for the use of cheap labor and the exploitation of workers. The union notes this action is untimely as it will affect their workers, some of whom are single parents and the sole breadwinners of their families, while facing increased food and other commodity prices. JTAM is calling upon Scotiabank to immediately rescind this decision and to meet with the workers and their representatives to explore alternative solutions. They are also calling on the Minister of Labour, Stephen McClatchy, to act to avert what the union calls an impending crisis. On the international scene, hundreds of truckers drove their giant rigs into the Canadian capital, Ottawa, over the weekend to protest against Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's COVID-19 vaccine mandates required to cross the United States border. On Saturday, there were more than 10,000 people around Parliament Hill, uh, very noisy but by and large peaceful. The tones changed, only a couple of thousand now, a little more testy, a little more confrontational. <laughs> Businesses near Parliament Hill, including Ontario provincial liquor stores, would not even open their doors Sunday after protesters the night before verbally and physically assaulted staff for trying to enforce the very public health rules on mask wearing and vaccine passports that the protesters are here to overturn. One group stormed a nearby shelter, assaulted a security guard, and stole meals that had been prepared for the homeless. It's been super challenging for the staff. It, it's very discouraging. So yesterday was a very, very difficult today. We're hoping for better today. At the National War Memorial, a protester was filmed dancing on the tomb of the unknown soldier. And then, overnight, some people urinated on the shrine. Ottawa police say no arrests have been made, but they are investigating vandalism at the memorial and to police property. Protest organizers did not respond to Global News requests for interviews. So what's next? Canada's vaccine mandate for international truckers is staying in place, and in any event, Washington has imposed the very same rule for the U.S. As for other public health restrictions these protesters oppose, those are rules put in place by provincial and municipal governments. In any event, the House of Commons will open for business Monday morning as planned. And though Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and his family were relocated this weekend as a precautionary measure, the PM remains in the national capital region and will be back to work virtually on Monday. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.